Hey guys, welcome back to EMT Made Easy. In this short clip, I am going to try to make a video on perfusion and hypoperfusion and try to break it down at a real basic level. So, all perfusion really means is that, let me see, these represent O2, obviously oxygen. This is a vessel. So this represents every single vessel in your body. This is a, pa a piece of tissue. So tissue can be skin, liver, lungs, everything in your body. It's all made out of tissues, right? Then the red, the little red circles are made are the cells that make the tissue. So cells make tissue, tissue makes organs, all right? Uh, and the vessel carries the blood to your tissues, right? So what happens in perfusion, what this really means, it means that Oxygen and nutrients are getting to the tissues of your body in a timely manner, so in a good time, right? It's a good time. Deliveries are being made every time within a good time frame. Well, in perfusion, when oxygen gets to the, the tissues of your body and then they get into your cell, um, and I, I know I've covered this, ATP is created. So... If we are delivering the O2 via your vessels, the oxygen to the, the cells, ATP is being produced, um, then you're going to stay alive. Your patient's going to stay alive because perfusion is occurring. So perfusion just means that oxygen, if you want to just make it real basic, real simple, perfusion means that oxygen is, is getting carried to the tissues of the body in a timely fashion, and so we can produce the ATP. ATP keeps your body alive. Um, so just remember, O2 gets to the tissues, the tissue is made out of cells, and the O2 gets into the cells, ATP is cre created with glucose, I put some glucose in here too, but um, we, ha we have stored fats and glucose that your body can use in case um, we can't transport the glucose, so that's why I'm not really emphasizing on glucose right now. So what all hypoperfusion means is that... It's slow. Hypo means slow or low. So it's slow perfusion. So that means hypoperfusion means that the oxygen that's in your vessels, you know, that's on your, your little red blood cells on the hemoglobin, that O2 is not being carried to the tissues of your body in a timely fashion. So therefore, we can't make adequate amount, an adequate amount of ATP. So ATP production goes down. Now, ATP production goes down. If this happens then the, the tissues, the cells start to die, um, out of digestion, you start getting sodium buildup, it just, everything goes out of whack, right? If your cells die, your tissues die. If your tissues die, your organs die, and then you die. Your patient dies. So that's what is going on. That's what's going on here. Now, I hope I made it pretty clear. I think I did. Um, so now let's go over why you would have hypoperfusion, why you would have low perfusion, low pressure. So a whole bunch of things can, ha can happen, and this is where shock comes into play. But I'm not really going to get into this right now. I have a whole video on shock. Go ahead and reference back to that if you want to. But hypoperfusion, this could occur from getting a cut on your vessel, right? So if you're bleeding out, now you're tank is gonna so let's pretend that the vessel is like a tank so if the tank is the same or better yet how about a water hose let's pretend it's a water hose so if water is going through the water hose and the amount of water is decreased is brought down that pressure is going to decrease have you have you noticed that if uh, it might help you to pause right now go outside in your yard open up a water hose go full blast and watch that pressure that water just coming out and then lower it about halfway, and that pressure is going to reduce. That water is going to come out slower. So that's one way we can have hypoperfusion, by bleeding out and we're losing liquid, right? Another one could be if your heart is not working. If you're having a, a heart attack, um, tissue damage, and now your pumper is not pumping adequately, so now that pressure is not being built, right? Because there's not that, that force isn't there to pressurize. The pumper isn't pumping the, the, the fluid. That's another way. And there are different ways... If you're going through anaphylactic shock, the vessel can get bigger. And now if your vessel gets bigger, let's say you have the same amount of water going out, but now you make the water hose bigger, that pressure is going to go down. So blood pressure goes down. And this is hypoperfusion. And why does it matter? 
it matters because if we pressure down, that fluid isn't going to travel fast enough to where it needs to go to the tissues of the body in the cells to create ATP. And then people start to get sick. Um, if it continues, they will die. All right, guys, leave your comments below. I hope it helped out, and I will see you next time. Bye.